so far we've been able to uh, manipulate a little bit uh, what happens with uh, one object uh, but one of the uh, nice um, powerful aspects of using Python is that you can do lots of things uh, very fast in a repetitive way and save yourself some drudgery. So let's work in the file uh, cubes.blend um, which should be available for your download and um, let's uh, see what Python gives us to work with uh, multiple things um, uh, you know uh, over and over again so like how do we do the same thing to lots of items well the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to kind of specify that we have a collection of objects that we have you know a, a, a type in in Python that would uh, contain not just one item you know not just a number or a name but a whole bunch of them a list if you will so um, there's actually multiple types of collections in Python and, and the first one we're going to look at is a list so a, a list is basically an, an ordered uh, collection of objects you can define a list as follows so let's let's actually make one so you basically um, I'm going to get, assign it to a variable um, called L and you basically use these uh, square brackets to um, to define a list um, so let's have a look at our list so I can do a list and you can put anything you want uh, any any other type inside the list so I can put in you know the number 100 as the first item I can put in the word um, Sparta as the next item I can put in even another list as the third item um, and I could put in uh, bpy.context as the final item right so any kind of object can go inside this list so now we have if I hit enter I have a four item list and the first item is a number 100 the second item is the word Sparta the third item is another list with 0 and 1 in it and the final item is bpy.context right so if I hit L and enter or print L um, I'll get this um, representation of what's in this list this is basically what happens if you try to print out bpy.context on the console it just tells you what it is it's the structure context at this location in memory um, and um, yeah so that's pretty cool uh, but how do you get at specific elements in this rest list well that is actually not too hard either um, it's actually also using the square brackets so basically what you need to do is type in the name of the, the variable that refers to the list or even type out the list itself and then follow that by square brackets and inside the square brackets we're going to put a number that is indexing it's called an index and it's telling us which element from the list do we want do you want the first one second one third one or fourth one so if I type in l1 I'd expect to get that number 100 back but if I hit enter I actually get the second element in the list and not the first and that's because Python starts counting from the number 0 instead of the number 1 so if I want the first element I would type in L0 and then I would get that 100 um, and I can you know get the second and the third and the fourth now if I type in L4 which is actually the fifth element I get an error it says index error out of range because uh, there aren't four there aren't five items in this list there are only one two three four so zero one two three there's no four so we will get an error you can also put in negative numbers so if I put in negative one I'm gonna get the last item from the list uh, so you can count from the end of the list as the, well as from the beginning so now that we've done that let's look at a handy list that we can get out of context so you notice that here in the 3d view I have a bunch of cubes um, they're just uh, let's go to wireframe so we can see them more clearly and we have the light and a camera 
and I can just box select all the cubes and I don't want the light selected so I'm gonna deselect it here and so now we have a bunch of cubes selected and so let's go back to our little context so remember we had so we have this one cube that's highlighted over here in the corner so if I do uh, what we did before bpy.context.object I get that single active cube the last one selected so that's the one that's got the you know the light orange it's white here and it's the one that is displayed in the properties over here if I want to get at all the selected ones here I'm gonna do the same bpy.context but instead of getting the object from the context I'm gonna get the selected and you can hit control space by the way to do a, a, a completion and then you can see what's available um, so if I just do context dot and control space you get a huge list of available things that you can get out of the context and so that's how you can figure out what's inside something is just by doing this uh, auto completion and in this case I'm gonna go to uh, selected objects so I'm just gonna do that and if I hit enter I get this massive list and you can see it starts with the square brackets and it has each cube object separated by commas so I have a really really long list um, let's say I want to know how long that list is right um, well there's a special function for that um, it's called len so I can just use the old function calling method right so you type in the name of the function and then a paren and then the argument inside and if I hit enter I have a hundred cubes in my list so if I go back here I should be able to index in so to get the uh, tenth cube I can go like that and I can get the tenth cube in the list now they're not in the order of their number it's it's order is it's just a random order of what was selected so we don't need to pay attention to that matching up but I can get the tenth element and so forth I can get the ith element uh, from that list or the nth element by indexing into it um, so that's great um, but what about um, doing lots of things to it you know now I have this list I want to do a bunch of stuff and we're gonna use um, uh, what's called a loop um, and so the loop syntax uh, looks like a command like do this loop and then everything inside the loop has to get indented in um, and that is the uh, sort of the um, the uh, you know the the uh, body yeah the body of the loop is inside the indentation level and so the indentation level here and you can indent with spaces or tabs it just has to be the same exact indentation defines uh, what's going on inside the loop um, so to do this looping thing I'm actually gonna do it in a uh, well first let's do it with uh, uh, with our like our, our test list here so I can do for I in L which means for each element in the list L enter I notice I get a, a handy automatic indentation here and I'm just gonna print I right so that we're just gonna use the old print function to print out the value of I and if I hit enter um, a couple of times the console knows that I've exited the loop and it'll print out all the elements in that list so let's go back to our cubes and let's actually make our first um, text uh, script so we're gonna go into the text editor and we're gonna create a new script and we're gonna call this uh, cubes.py and um, uh, the first thing we need to do to know here is that we don't have any of those convenience imports that we had at the top of the Python console our script doesn't have BPY or anything like this here so anything from here down is missing and if we wanna have it we have to actually import it ourselves so the first thing we do 
at the top of any script that uses Blender is import BPY. And that gets us Blender Python. So now we have everything. We have bpy.context, so I could even assign the result to a variable. So we could say my, you know, so list of cubes, or let's just call it like, uh, you know, uh, cubes, right? It doesn't matter what we call it, it's just a label, equals to bpy.context.selected objects. So that's all my cubes. Of course, it doesn't have to be cubes. This could work on any type of object. So I'm just going to call it obs. Once again, the label only affects the readability and not the logic. And then we'll try a loop. So I can do, say, for ob in objects, on obs, sorry. And I'll hit enter. And you notice I get an indentation here. By the way, these three buttons are really handy to have on. They do syntax highlighting, line numbers, and so on and so forth. I can then say ob, and let's get the z location, so object.location, and let's say z equals to ob.location.x plus ob.location. Dot y. So we're just going to add the x and y location and put the result in the z location for each cube. And then we can simply go here and click on run script. And we've just done something kind of cool, right? Um, so basically each cube's x and y location just got added up and the result got placed in the cube's height. So that's really neat. Um, let's say we wanted to use one of those fancy math functions. So we can go here and we can do from math import star. We can also get our random numbers, right? So ra from random import star. And then we can kind of change this line, right? So we can do, instead of uh, taking the sum of these, we can just say that we want a random height for all the cubes. And I'm going to run the script again. And now we got a random number here. And let's say I want it to be a little bit bigger, right? So we can multiply that number by, say, 10 and run it again. And now we have a sort of a bigger distribution of randomness. So you can randomize the locations of these cubes. Now, I haven't touched their x and y location. Uh, we can do other things. Uh, for instance, we can uh, do a, a sign of ob.location.x and do like sort of a wavy sign function. And we can also like um, add ob.location.y in here and do another kind of a wavy uh, thing here. Uh, we can try different functions here. For instance, here's a tangent. Oops, I didn't mean to hit enter. Run that script. And this is the tan function. Um, so um, we can we can have a lot of fun uh, with, um, you know, uh, running functions on arrays of objects. Um, one useful thing that we could do is we could rename a bunch of objects. And uh, in the next section, we'll have a look at object names and how we use them in Blender.